Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and in this short video we are going to discuss the most important events that took place in Ukraine during the previous night of the local time. The Russians reported that Ukrainians made another wave of attack in the direction of Crimea but the Russian air defense system managed to shut down five drones in the vicinity of Jankoy and, and this, this settlement and that they managed to capture uh, control over more than four drones that were flying in the direction of Crimea. Now, now we are going to Marinka. Very interesting updates are coming from this settlement. The Russians continue advancing in this area, and as a result of fierce fighting and storming operation in this area, they managed to maintain the combat line, they managed to maintain the bridgehead, and currently did capture another block in this area. And currently they have like a very strict combat line, front line in this area, and the Russians continue pushing in the western part, trying to force the Ukrainians to leave Marinka. And as we discussed, probably most of the military Russian experts suppose that the Russians are able to capture Marinka by the end of this month. Now we're going to Belgorod. There are very interesting updates from the Kupins front line from Belgorod area as well. Uh, the, the Ukrainians, um, the Russians com reported that they completed the evacuation process from Shebekina. Uh, currently, uh, most of the peoples from some parts uh, that were under very heavy fire from the Ukrainian side have already evacuated and probably but this is a very interesting situation and now we're going to discuss this in more details that the Russians reported they evacuated but we understand that they can't uh, give the situation to continue this way. From the other side the Russians continue bombing and shelling the Ukraine positions in Wovchansk and so on but uh, this is like the updates about the uh, like shelling of each other and the most important thing is that yesterday in the evening the Wagner's uh, reported that uh, few groups, uh, probably some forces of Wagner's, was, uh, were redeployed in the direction of Belgorod. Uh, Prigozhin reported that uh, there are few brigades, few battalions in Wagner's. Currently, most of the forces are in rest, trying to restore their mighty, their forces after the Battle of Bakhmut, but there were some forces who during the most of the time um, during the battle of bakhmut was were in training centers where it's like in some on some military exercises and so on and most of them uh and the, probably during the previous months there were a lot of video and photo confirmation of cooperation between wagner forces prigozhin his officers his uh, his uh, specialists with the forces in belgrad and if you remember somewhere at 15 of may we got report that the russians managed to create the territory defense brigade of belgrad and the sources were saying that they managed to accumulate up to 3,000 uh, soldiers army so if we are saying that one battalion has around 400 soldiers that means that Ukraine, the Russians managed to create uh, two, almost two brigades like one brigade three battalions and one regiment forces in Belgrade so they managed to create two brigades in Belgrade of territory defense forces today we received an update that the Russians managed to bring their uh, squads uh, up to I believe that uh, something around three four battalions up to one brigade to Belgorod and as we understand this is the thing that the Russians are planning to do right now so probably um, we thought that probably the Russians would not do some offensive operation in this area but uh, the Ukrainians forced the Russians to start active fighting in this area and probably this is exactly what the Russians are going to do within the next few weeks because they can't allow the Ukrainians to bomb and shell Donetsk Belgrade because this is a very bad situation, very bad factor that reduced the reputation of Russian authority. So anyway, the Russians don't have any other option. They need to attack, they need to create a buffer and they need to capture the line of the settlements from Vovchansk, uh, like Hutary, uh, Hrimovka, Malaya, Vovcha, Vov uh, Varvarovka. So anyway, within the next months we are going to see a small local operational war battle in this area uh, you need to understand the level and the like the uh, this of the situation when talking about the battle of mariupol there were around 40,000 russians again 24 uh, forces that were blocked and in, encircled in uh in mariupol when talking about severe donetsk agglomeration there was a battle between like 30,000 again 30,000 of ukrainians and the russians and when talking about the battle of bakhmut there were like around 50,000 from each side at the, every single moment in the, uh, on that battle. And when talking about the battle of, let's say, borderlands, Belgrade, Bor Belgrade borderlands, the battle is going to be something around 10,000 against 10,000. This is not like greatest battle. This is operational level battle, but very important for the Russians to push the Ukrainians and to 
create a buffer zone and the most important that the Russians are forced to send the Wagners on this front line. But from the other side we see that the Russians have changed their tactics and we see that currently uh, they're planning to change a little bit and this is a very nice step from the Russian side. The thing is that since the beginning of the special military operation most of the Russian forces were professional soldiers and they had lack of unqualified low qualification army and this is a very big problem and you know that it is always a problem anywhere if you have a bunch of professionals you don't have uh, people who can do the dirty job and this is exactly uh, the situation that the russians faced during the pre previous phases of special military operation and the opposite situation was from the ukrainian side they had the army of unprofessionals and they had a lack of professional soldiers and currently they're trying to risk to like um, uh, to create a professional army and the Russians currently are focused on creation of unprofessional army of those guys who will do one important things that we can find in the title that such forces territory defense brigade so they need an army they need an army who can do exactly what they need to do based on the title of these type of forces they need to protect and to defend the territory so as I understand the Wagners are going so probably basically within the next week we're going to see a small army in this area up to 10 12 000 soldiers from the russian side they're going to be one brigade of stormtroopers wagners and we're going to see two brigades of territory defense forces and the tactic is going to be as follow wagners using three battalions will try to storm the settlements along this line along this entire area from vavchansk to varvarovka in this area on this line and as soon as they capture some territory they the territory defense will take their positions so we're going to see a small battle of bakhmut just on this local front line and when talking about wagners wagners is going to be wagners as in Bakhmut, but when talking about territory defense, they basically they will replace the VDV forces on the flanks uh, on, uh, in comparison with Bakhmut situation, and their main job is going to be the to secure the Wagner's flanks, while the Wagner, Wagner's will storm and push the Ukrainians back from this line. So this is going to be the situation, and uh, this is very interesting you know, from the Ukrainian side, as we know they have uh, like also a lot of territory defense forces, Russian free regiments, Russian forces like um like where those forces this one like free russian free russian regiment and let's say a russian volunteer corps furthermore as we know there are going to be some po forces and squads of the special unit kraken and uh, as you can see there are no mechanized brigades in this area most of the mechanized brigades are located in the kupinsk front line and we know that there are uh, there are separate story of kupinsk so this is exactly what is going to be in belgrade one more time wagner's with one with um, up to one brigade is going to storm the first line and the thing that the Russians are going to achieve as a result of first attack is to establish this bridge hat and to push the Ukrainians from this line. And this will go, is going to create a small buffer, at least in this area, and then the Russians will see what kind of progress uh, the Wagners will see, what the Russians are able to achieve in Kupinsk, and if they're going to have success, of course, the Wagners will proceed and will continue to the south, and they will stop somewhere on this line between the Seversky Donetsk River and the Askol River on the line so this basically this is the target of this of that operation and uh, probably we'll see and this is uh, this is a very interesting operation because and this is not a very difficult operation for the russians the thing is that there is a, a river uh seversky Danius river this is the river i'll show you on the map for better understanding so this is seversky Danius river so as you can see the flanks will be uh, secured by the russian side there are going to be not many problems the ukrainians won't be able to attack the russians let's say from this area and uh, this perfect situation they will be able to test the russian army and the question is just uh, for wagner's to push and for defense brigades not to allow the ukrainians to make counter offensive because the wagner's will be limited in their forces just one brigade so they need to, they are limited they are not so flexible and their main purpose to storm and territory defense need to prevent any counter offensive from the ukrainian side and on the other side as we know there is a russian territory so basically there are like detachment forces in this area so as you can see they need just to push uh, between these two lines with the wagner forces and to and to secure the flanks by the territory defense forces this is the tactic that we're going to see within the next months probably this operation is going to be started very soon because the russians don't have time uh, for this operation the ukrainians continue shelling and bombing this line and this reduced the reputation of the uh, government of the authorities and so on 
interesting updates are coming as well as usually from the coupons front line the russians reported and some sources are saying it's for now it's very difficult to like to check whether it's true or not but the sources confirms that the russians are trying to create some bridgehead on this side of ukrainian side the foscal river yesterday we discussed that uh, pre video, previous videos we discussed that that bridge had probably bet located between durichna and small settlement novomlinsk uh, today the previous night some sources are saying that this bridge had a little bit to the north so anyway as we understand there are two options or whether or uh, either it's uh, some kind of media operation from the Russian side and they're not going to make any bridgehead or they're trying to establish some and also we see that uh, from these directions the Russians may try to start movement in this direction to meet, to meet with the Russian forces, Wagner forces somewhere in the vicinity of the settlements like Pichinegi, uh, Pasprasyanka, Artemivka so in somewhere in this area anyway we're going to see this battle because the Russians don't have any, op any other option they need to reduce the shelling and bombing of their territory and that's it for today military summary channel reminds to condemn any violence in ukraine thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes join my patreon and have a good day bye bye